first call out the starters of your De La Salle Zobel Junior Archers. And guard number nine, Keeper Alas. The other guard number 19, Alwin Arboleda. And forward number 24, Waki Espina. The other forward number 25, Charles Dimaano. And at center number 77, Tomas Cruz. Their head coach is Boris Aldeguer. Check out now the starters of your USD Tiger Guards. At center number 10, Briggs Versosa. At guard number 18, JB Lim. At forward number 19, Andre Dugal. The other guard number 28, Lance Roquillo. And the other forward number 34, Sam Reyes. Their head coach is Manu Iligo. Officiating this ballgame are crew chief, Edith Botecario. Umpire 1, Junior Bayais. And umpire 2, Judel Lebres. And our commissioner for season 86, Coys Basketball, Marvin Starting lineups for the Junior Archers. Alas will start alongside Arboleda, Espina, Dumaano, and Thomas Cruz at center for DLSZ. Meanwhile, the Tiger Cubs will start Lim, Dungo, Ronquillo, Reyes, and Versosa, who will be taking center here for USD. Our officiating trio, Botecario, Bayais, and Nebres. The three on the floor to settle things down and officiate for these two teams. And here we go, first quarter action, game number two of today's UAP Season 86 boys basketball matchup. Kobe Dayo here on the panel, joined by Coach Juanito Gregorio and Coach Get Two teams, both in that top four as of now in the standings, and both very, very eager to come home with a victory here. You know, it's gonna be a very exciting ball game here. Two teams that rely heavily on their backcourt. And uh, have bigs who really can't complement the talents of the backcourt. So let's see whose game plan will work out here in today's ballgame. Well, we get a possession here by DLSU, and already we can see the two teams getting chippy here on the defensive end. And very physical teams we're going to have here. Of course, UST, one of those teams that already have a lot of high school experience. So they want to outsmart and outplay physically this DLSC team. Yet another foul here. This time it's going to go on DLSU. Both of these teams, like you mentioned, Coach, eager to stay in that Final Four fight. Two and one in the season, but only one team can go home with win number three. Ball finds its way to Versosa. That shot misses for him. Asal now with the ball here. Keeper Alas with it. That's stolen by USD. Dim goes all the way, goes all the way to the basket and lays it up and in. You know, the whole season long, JB Lim has been proving that he has a lot of ways for him getting those baskets right there, showing the fear, showing how to get it done with the physicality. Keeper Alas can get that one to go. Andre Dungo has it. And that's stolen by Keeper Alas. Alas having trouble here with the USD defenders. Lim now with it behind the back to Reyes. And Reyes working his way on the inside. Cannot get it to fall. And Alas with the rebound. The defense by the white shirts. Two guys running down on defense, closing down on any option on the inside. Alas gets it to his teammates and he is fouled now by JB Lim. <laughs> That was Alwin Arboleda who got hacked. 14 seconds on the shot clock. And the LSZ will have 14 seconds on the shot clock here. And then again, stealing the ball here for USD. Tungo gets it to Ronquillo. Ronquillo with a short, short floater. And that one doesn't drop. Alas with a jumper. That's offline and Lim gets the rebound. Oh, no execution from Lasalle early on here. They are struggling on the passing lane and their shot attempts. But they're getting some good stops here, coach, against USD. And that time it was Lim who had the last touch and it'll stay with the junior archers. 
Casal forced to go offense to defense substitution here for them to be able to execute a little bit more. And uh, the, La the LaSalle coaching staff not happy with the way they're starting, forced to time out here. DLSC still unable to buy any sort of basket here. 0 for 2 to start. And there's still a bit cold here, Coach, to start this game. And finally, though, Keeper Alas gets the first basket for the Junior Archers. You know, it's very underrated skill of Keeper Alas is his rebounding. We talk about his passing, we talk about his scoring abilities, yet this guy gets into double-digit rebounding almost every moment. Nice run here by DLSC as Dabao gets the bucket in for two. And this is one thing that he'll be doing every time he sees an open opportunity to run. He'll be leaking out and he'll be going for finishes. Now four points for LaSalle on the board. And Kilio gets it to Tumo. Tumo for three. Bang, bang. You can never leave this guy open because this guy is a shooter. And maybe a slow shot, but he just makes sure that he makes those three-point attempts. He gets the lead now for USD here, a one-point lead for the Tiger Cubs. And it seems like both teams are a bit awake now after a couple of possessions. The very offensive-minded teams here, both of these teams. But LaSalle, just a little uncareful on those passing lanes, but I'm sure they'll be adjusting eventually. Alas, from downtown. That's offline, battle for the rebound here by multiple white and yellow shirts. But it falls into the hands now of USD off the steal from JB Lim. Lim with a fake, with a spin off the glass, no. And Ronquillo from behind trying to get it. And that's gonna stay with USD. USD has been very active on the passing lane already. Four steals for them early on in the ball game, all from the same time. And that zone really making things hard for LaSalle early on. And you can see Keeper Alas asking for the challenge already there. Coaches will not give it, but it'll be a possession now for VLSZ. Alas, Kudabao gets it right back to Alas. He fires from downtown. Too strong. And that ball will trickle out of bounds. It'll head back to USD. Now that's one thing I love about the bigs of LaSalle. They might be undersized when you're just looking at the height, but their activity on the down low, especially on the offensive boards, really gives them a lot of life, giving them a lot of extra opportunities. And guys like Thomas Cruz and the Charles Dimaano are two guys we really have to commend because they really are big factors in the plays of LaSalle here. Really challenging every rebound off of the taller trees from this USD team. Well, USD will have possession here. Ball in the hands now of Lance Ronquillo. Ronquillo puts it up, floater no good. And the LSZ with the rebound. Alas gets into the wing, three-pointer no good that time for the Junior Archers, but Dabao manages to seal it behind from Andre Dumo. Dabao for three, too short. Dumo with the rebound. Ronquillo has it for the Tiger Cubs. Dumo guarded here by Dabao. Off the screen from Loreto and Alas trying to steal it. And it'll go out of bounds. That'll be USD's ball with 4.6 on the shot clock. Both teams really tapping that ball a lot on the passing lane, trying to go for steals or maybe just slow down the offense of each other. That's why very slow start we're having here. First five minutes, only five to four. USD with two seconds to shoot. JB Lim fires from downtown. Shot will not go, and DLSZ grabs the board. Spina to Dabao, inside to Ronquillo. Alas, open for three. Can't get it in. 
Rebound now to the Tiger Cubs. Roquillo is pushing. Roquillo will drive, will kick it out. Loreto in the lane. Loreto puts it up. No. And another possession here for the junior archers. Well, both teams just having a struggle here to find the cylinder and a travel call on Espina. Offense not really a thing here in the first quarter. Both teams are having trouble in terms of execution, trying to find the best options on their offensive sets. But on defense, you gotta commend both teams really reading the scouting report very well here. UST got it for a zone early on, and LaSalle just closing down on the talent that UST has. Well, right now, Coach, both teams are shooting 20% from the field here. Both 2 for 10. Now, UST going for that two-man substitution. Every time it's going to be on that back backcourt, it's going to be Velasquez and Ludovice, and then Lim and Roquillo. So that is always the package for USD. Well, that time for USD, Velasquez couldn't get it in. Four minute mark here in the first quarter. Dabao fires for downtown and takes the lead here for DLSC. Every time that, uh, since Dabao was entered in the ball game, a lot has changed. For DLSZ here, it's already two points, one still in now. And now, so already five points, I mean, for the ball. And USD gets a bucket on the other end, courtesy of Buenaflor, and ties this game at seven. And DLSU now will take a timeout here, but check out this replay, coach. Let's look at that. The ball has been ready on that middle from that kick out of Kiefer Lassen on the other end, giving it to their best inside presence in Koji when a floor inside outside game we're watching for both of these teams. Coach Heidi Ong with her USD Growling Tigresses. They're gonna be taking the floor here later on against this squad of the new Lady Bulldogs. Game number three for them, the final game of the season. With one team taking home the women's basketball crown. But we, before that, we start here with DLSZ and Mako Dabao with some hot shooting for the junior archers. What a start for Mako Dabao. He's not usually their main weapon on offense. Yet with the zone, the best buster would always be that three-pointer. It is already made two here in the race ball game. Mako Dabao has more points himself than the entire USD team right now, Coach. Eight points already in this one. He has really put on a shooting performance early here in the game. Every time I'm not gonna get tired of saying that his best comparison for me is one of the, the Zobel graduates as well, Nico Elorde. One of those guys who puts an emphasis on defense, yet is always ready to contribute on offense. Meanwhile, USD trying to answer with a point to the paint. That shot is blocked. Second try still no. Third try is good. And that comes at the hands of Carl Manding. Alas going all the way. Alas is fouled. We'll shoot some free throws. Watch here the replay. Koji win the floor against two. Challenge 12, but Manding stay active. Oh, sorry, that's not Manding. Manding on the third try. There you go. Four opportunities for LaSalle. Eventually getting them two points here. That is one strength of UST in this in, in the entirety of our juniors division they stay active on the boards but with this length it's not a problem for UST with the floor Versosa and all the other talents for UST. So Camille Clarin and the rest of the NU Lady Bulldogs watching on waiting for their time. What a day we're gonna have here in Araneta. Good ball game to start. Now, another good matchup in Zabel and UST. Championship number one and then championship number two. A fully back day, Dinas Araneta. So, come on over here in Cobao. Now, it seems only fitting that we have 
a jam-packed game day of basketball action here. Here at one of the most uh, storied venues in the Philippines. Iconic in the Araneta Center, Cubao, and a good way to end our season for the women's and men's division. And a great day to continue on for our boys' division as well. DLSZ with a three-point lead here. Ball in the hands of Alas. Dabao fakes, Dabao drives all the way to the rim and gets it into drop. Wow, Dabao really stepping up here in today's ball game. All of the attention on Kiefer Alas, yet there is a guy trying to help out on the offensive end. Ten points already for Dabao. But what a game Mako Dabao is having here. But on the other end, USD answering off the bucket and one opportunity now for Waki Ludovice. It looks like Waki Ludovice still has that hot streak from his last game. See that pass pick to the drive, to that jelly layup. And Waki Ludovice really showing everybody that he is both an outside and inside threat here in the UAP. Well, Waki that time challenged by Andre Pabellano. But challenge did not matter for him as he now completes the three-point play opportunity and cuts the lead down to two. Waki Ludovice at 25 points also in the same venue here. So it looks like he has found his comfort arena here in Araneta. Uh, find the right, right touch in the, that rim around the, the board. And he has, it's really paid dividend now for USD as they are still only down by two as Buena Flor. Strong move to the basket. Ties this ball game at 14. Perfect way for Buena Flor to finally get his rhythm back. Foul trouble in this last game. Now he can get the chance on being one of the main guys again for USD. Machenda fakes two defender, defenders. Cannot get that one ball. Makodaba with a jump shot. Will not go that time and that's going to be USD's ball. Watch the replay here. Challenge 12 by Raha. But too long, too strong, too good. Uji Buena Flor getting that too for USD. Buena Flor now leading all scorers on the Espana side with four points now. Ludovice gets it to Buxin. He fires for three. It's offline. Ball now in the hands of DLSZ. Dabao gets it to Gubat. Gubat drives, gets it on the inside. Shot up, up and in for DLSU. And that'll give Bon Daha an opportunity for a three point play. Bon Daha, not really a guy who asks for the ball a lot, but he always moves on the offensive end, ready for those drop passes. And with that activity down low, he will get a few opportunities. And now that was a perfect drop pass to him. Now getting the lead for LaSalle. Daha had a bit of a wall there to go through to get the shot up and in. Cannot complete the three-point play, but he does take the lead here for DLSZ. Books it, gets it to Ludovice. He fires for three. Will not go, and a foul call. A push underneath, that's gonna go on Guba. Might be a miss there for UST, but La Sala has to be careful on that staggered screen to the middle on Ludovice, because that is what got him red hot in that last game, giving him a lot of open shots on that middle. So LaSalle needs to adjust early on. Reyes gets blocked at the rim by Mako Dabao. Great challenge for him. Ludovice, meanwhile, puts it in for USD. Specialty of the house for Waki. Every time he's open, he's going to take it and make it. And a steal and a dime. A hockey assist plus the bucket for Waki Ludovice. And just like that, Waki Ludovice suddenly is on top of the scoring for USD here. You know, off the bench guy, but as soon as he is entered, we'll add a warm-up, warm-up for Waki Ludovice. Instant scoring for USD right away. Well, impressive sequence of events that time for Ludovice. 
as he takes a three-point lead here for USD. Dabao, shot clock turned off for him. Dabao spins, puts it up, cannot get it in. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Slow start for both teams offensively. Halfway through, we were only at five and four. But eventually, both teams were able to pick it up. Got their, got their footing here on the game. Of course, Casal Zubel led by that guy already in double digits in Mako Dabao on the side of the yellow. Two guys, Andre Dumo as well as Waki Lodubise. A good scoring matchup we're having here in the first quarter. Uh, Mako Dabao for PLSC has contributed already double digit points here for his squad. They're down by three after the first 10 minutes of play. We'll have the second for you when we return. Back in the ball game, second quarter coming up in a bit. And the USD Tiger Cubs are up 19 to 16 against the De La Salzabel Junior Archers. USD went on a short run there to end the quarter, coach, to go up by three. And here in the second quarter, they're carrying some momentum now against this Junior Archers team. Now, USD always a very deep team, has a lot of depth in that lineup. So eventually, when you put someone off the bench, they really can contribute in terms of scoring. That is Waki Ludovice already with eight points to end the quarter. Gubat with the miss on the other end for DLSE. Ludovice now throws it on the inside. Reyes kicks it out. Ludovice with eight seconds on the shot clock. Ludovice pulls up for three. Cannot get it to fall, but it stays with USD. Boksit. Fires in and out. And LaSalle with the board. LaSalle running. Bank shot in for Waki Espina. And he now puts this game to within one. Finally, Waki Espina getting his first shot off the ball game. The usual scorer for LaSalle has been called in the first. Not a lot of opportunities. But here, he gets the edge here off the fast break, going for the float there. Well, that's Bina now with his first bucket in the game. Bringing LaSalle to within one here. 18-9 to nine is our score in favor of USD. Andre Dumo misses that one. Offensive rebound here to the Tiger Cubs. Battling his way inside. That shot does not will not go for Car Carl Manding. And Masal now with the ball. Alas. Kicks it out. Mangainan for three. Will not drop. And Espina now with it. Espina drives. Another floater for him. That time it does not go. And Manding grabs the rebound. That zone really making things hard for the offense of LaSalle early on here. Ludovice gets it to Dumo. Andre Dumo drives, hands it off inside. It finds its way in the corner. Benaflor cannot get it to drop. And LaSalle with another possession. A junior archer is only down by one here. Imaano looking for teammates, and there's a foul called. LaSalle just, just, LaSalle just could not find the right person on this zone. It's one thing to play a zone, but USD has the length to make things hard for that zone to really uh, work for them. You know, it reminds me a lot of the Syracuse defense they had before. They recruit long guys so that the zone really works in their favor, and it's the same way for USD right here. They're adding some extra length now, Coach, as Bricks Versosa checks back in the game along with Ronquillo, Esteban, and JB Lim. Manganan throws it on the inside. They kick it out. Manganan for three. 
Can't get it to fall. Offensive rebound. It goes to DLSU. And that shot falls for Charles Di Maano. And once again, right at the right place, at the right time, Charles Di Maano and his activity on the rebounding end. That is already six rebounds for the undersized big of De La Salzabelle. The Tiger Cubs now down by one and an offensive foul called here on Versosa. Watch here. A lot of yellow shirts, no problem. Di Maano just has that instinct on where that ball will land. And he is such a natural on the rebounding end. Always knows and always has the perfect timing on when to get that ball. Well, Di Maano now with six rebounds in the game here. Two coming from the offensive end as the LSU has that ball trickle out of bounds and it'll head back to USD. Mako Dabao checking back into the game for LaSalle. Dabao really had himself a first quarter here. Only guy in double digits for LaSalle's belt. Donquillo kicks it out. Andre Dumo now with the ball. Dungo with a step through, three seconds to shoot. Ronquillo for three, puts it in. And UST gets another steal, courtesy of JV Lim. And a five point swing going UST's way. Uh, this is one of the best backcourts here in the UEAP Juniors right now. This Ronquillo Lim and Dungo tandem is really very deadly because both offensively and defensively, they really know each other. And a very good comfort level with each other, knowing when and how to move with each other. And a good play there. And on that note, Coach, they force a turnover and already get two more points up. A seven-point swing for USD, and they have a six-point lead in the game. Let's watch here. A miscommunication on the switch, leaving Bricks all alone on the inside here. USD up here, 26 to 20, as DLSZ takes a timeout. in the ball game the DLSC junior archers down here 20 to 26 against the USD Tiger Cubs and coach USD going on a seven and nothing run in the past couple of seconds only in this game and just like that up by six here well you know once they put in Ronquillo, Lim and Dungo they were ready to take off here in today's ball game, going for that press, getting a few steals and a lot of easy baskets. Now up by six here in the second quarter. And this is the largest lead for USD. As Daniel Santa Maria checks into the game for the junior archers. And that's going to be out of bounds. It'll head back to USD. Lasalle now answering with a little bit more length here, putting in Santa Maria, Espina, and Di Maano together, trying to challenge the length and versatility of USD here. 26 to 20 is our score here. USD looking to continue with their momentum. Pass on the inside to Dumo, who flips it up and in. Beautiful screen by Ronquillo, leaving Dumo wide open on the inside. Gotta create the screen of Lance there. For Alas with it, kicks it to Espina. Espina, step back, jumper, gets the roll for two. Rocky Espina shoots the ball from way up his head. It's so hard to challenge because this guy's pretty tall, around 6'2", 6'3". And when you shoot above your head, it's going to be very hard to defend that kind of shot. Ball right back into the hands of Lance Ronquillo. Dumo with six seconds to shoot here for USD. Oh, and Dumo tried to get the pass off, but an offensive foul called that time on the Tiger Cubs. Let's watch here that that play. Screen off Ronquillo, getting Dumo enough space. And on the next play, Rick Swall, no problem. Waki Espina finds a way in getting that fadeaway bucket. 
Yeah, I like that, Coach. Bricks wall. Yes, the bricks wall. Just thought about that now. No, I used it in the last game after a good block, and it, it seemed perfect, right? With with how tall he is. Uh, I think you need to trademark that, Coach, before anyone <laughs> gets it themselves. Before bricks, before bricks, Versosa uses it himself. <laughs> Andre Dungo for three and puts it in and gives UST their largest lead of the game. And now slowly but surely UST is now getting their rhythm here. They're making good stops and from those stops they're able to execute on offense. Slowly but surely chipping away here in today's ball game. And you see the hustle here from Ronquillo to save that one. And, on the, and right then and there, Dungo drilling it from downtown. You know, how, how comfortable are these three together? Ronquillo, Lim, and Dumo. It's just like they know where each other is going. Espina misfires on that one. Here's UST up and running. JB Lim going all the way. Tapped inside. Ronquillo battling in there with PLSZ. And that's going to stay with UST. And ELSC having to be, to, to match the momentum and the energy of USD here on the offensive and defensive boards. Scoring a little bit slower for Zobel here in the second quarter. They're trying to look for a guy the same way Mako Dabao stepped up in the first quarter, but only six points in the first six minutes of the second quarter for Zobel. Andre Dumo now has it. Matched up here by Kiefer Alas. Alas ha falling down numerous times before getting a foul called. And that's going to head to the junior archer's side. Great stop coming from Kiefer Alas here. Staying active, putting his heart to get that ball. Two yellow shirts, no problem. Kiefer Alas all alone will get that stop. And UST is now in penalty, so chance for Kiefer to get on the scoring column here. And would we say Kiefer, alas, does a little bit of everything for DLSZ? We mean exactly that. Even the non-counting stats or the non-counting points, he does it as well. You know, no star mentality for Kiefer, alas. And as we see the parents here, very supportive by Kiefer, even early in the morning. You know, he does everything, literally everything for De La Salle Zobel here. Putting in the hustle, of course, on offense, relies heavily on him. And you just gotta love it from your star, who will really put his heart out for your team. Well, last now with five points in the game to go along with three steals, two boards, and two assists. Damon Domangas gets called for the foul on DLSU. That's going to be USD's ball. 14 on the shot clock here for them. Lim throws it out to Ronquillo. Lance pulls up from downtown, will not go. And battle for the rebound. It's won here by DLSU, but a foul is called. And this time it's going to go on Charles DiMaano. They're saying there is an overextension of the arms of Charles DiMaano. One of the rare times that Charles will be called for a foul on the rebounding end. But I like this matchup. Both really great rebounders in Buenaflor and DiMaano. So I'm going to be looking at this matchup for the rest of the quarter. Versosa on the inside, just towering over the defenders to make it a 10-point lead. If he gets that ball that deep, that high, all you can do is pray for Bricks to miss. And a travel called on the other end on Daha. Can't do that against the Bricks wall. Too, too hard to attack someone who's 6'10 on the down low. Good stop coming from Bricks. I'm telling you, coach. Got to trademark. Got to trademark. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before they review this this game, and then someone is going to trademark it for themselves. Got to use that every game now. Here's JB Lim for USD. Reverse spin and kisses it off the glass. And I'm just so curious if we can make a full highlight reel on how many things JB Lim can do. A guy with a million moves here, and yet he is still in high school. 
Well, he has really been the catalyst for USD on that defensive end. Six steals in the game for USD. Five of those coming from JB Lim. Look at that. Half spin, drives, puts in a little dream shake, and goes for the reverse. It's not even talking about the highlights he had from his last game. You know, what a season JB Lim is having. Not really a guy that's been talked about a lot for USD. But in his own way, JB Lim is really making a name for himself. Well, JB Lim with six points in the ball game. I don't think there's been any point from JB Lim that we haven't showed on oh, yeah. the highlights to, so far today. You know, he is a type of guy that you know he scored. He's there. He's really going to show his talent from the drive, from the fast break early on. I mean, earlier, he saw it naman from a half spin. You know, how many skill sets, how many, how deep is the bag of JB Lim here? Uh, there are players who set things up for their team in terms of the assists, setting up plays for them. He sets up his teammates for success off of those steals that he's getting. Ludovice now for USD. Will not get that one to fall. ELSZ with the rebound. Alas gives it up. Ball right back into the hands of Kiefer. And another steal here for them. That's his six. Tried to get it inside to Ronquillo, but it's telegraphed here by Espina. Imaano trying to save that one for the junior archers, but it'll fall out of bounds and head to USD. Watch here what USD is doing. They're forcing the ball to one side so that you are... And then eventually, they are trying to read the passing lanes, going the weak side. And that is how exactly JB Lim is getting a lot of steals. So what a game plan by Coach Manu Inigo to get a lot of turnovers from the LSZ today in this ballgame. USD forcing already 12 turnovers on the Junior Archers. A miss there by the Tiger Cubs. Leads to a keeper, a last possession. A last is challenge at the rim. No foul called, and that's going to be USD's ball. Main defense coming from USD there. One guy forcing the baseline drive. Perfect help side coming from Esteban. Good stop for USD. Carl Landing has checked back into the game. So has Kurt Velasquez for USD, who is bringing down the ball now for his team, who is up by 11. When a floor. Nine, eight seconds to shoot here for USD. When a floor drives, takes it himself, spins and banks it home for two. What a last option. If you're big, can put that ball on the floor. A lot of down screens, a lot of up screens, but eventually it's the attack of winning floor that will give them the basket. Espina to Alas. Kiefer drives, cannot get back. Alas with a second opportunity, and he'll shoot some more free throws. Let's watch here. Good drive by winner floor. Trying to challenge, good individual defense, but on that last second, saw that there was a space on the spin. Great attack by Koji, who in the floor here, our best player on the game two games ago for USD. Meanwhile, on the other end, Keeper Alas shooting his seven and eight free throws of the game. Only one other player has attempted a free throw here, and that's Bon Daha. Keeper Alas, not yet. His best field goal day here. He, they are getting a lot of good stops in the USD. But his aggressiveness will continue to put him on the line. And just like that, he has been getting a few points here in this ballgame. And shooting a high percentage on that free throw line as well. 6 for 8, 75% at the strike. Oh, Ludovice, what a move. What a drive to the basket for him. Oh, this guy can really move off the ball every time that he's on the weak side, expecting either to cut or receive that screen on the outside. ELSZ looking to answer. Espina gets it to Davao. 
Dabao with a floater in the lane and Lays puts it in. First basket for Dabao here in the second quarter. Very crucial for them to cut into the lead. At 10 points in the first quarter, only two so far in this one. Ludovice fires. Shot will not go and that's going to be PLSD's ball. See here that drive of Dabao. You know, he's showing also his full arsenal. We haven't seen an offensive game like this from Mako Dabao. You know, he's been showing signs the past few games, but this is a breakout game for Dabao here. Shooting very efficiently as well, coach. 5 for 11 from the field. Espina drives. Shot will not go. Second opportunity for the LSC is good, courtesy of Andre Pabellano. And a lift called on Waki Ludovice. Watch here first. That offensive rebound by Pabelliano. You know, De La Salle Zobel has produced a lot of those types of guys throughout the years. Those guys who don't really need that ball a lot, but is very crucial in playing that role for Zobel. Offensive rebound here by Daha as he puts it up and in, plus the foul, an and one opportunity for Juan Daha. Now that offensive rebounding being a crucial part for the La Salle Zubel, for them to cut back into the lead. One from Pabiliano, now one from Daha. And you need these types of baskets for you to be able to make this a very manageable lead heading into halftime. Well, DLSZ making it a six-point lead as time expires, and that's going to be the end here for the first half. USD up by six after the two 10-minute quarters. But LaSalle making a run here, Coach, and having some, carrying some momentum heading into the halftime break. Well, LaSalle finishing the quarter very strong. Good way for them to put the lead into six. But this has all been USD here in the second quarter, led by that backcourt in Roquillo, Lim, and Dumo. Getting a lot of fast breaks, getting a lot of uh, easy stops. And of course, also extending the lead to as much as double digits in the second quarter. We'll see how LaSalle carries that momentum in the third quarter and we'll have that quarter with you after the halftime break. We're here at halftime, the big score reads 39, 36, 33. It's a six point lead for the Tiger Cubs. And USD holding firm on the lead, but it was LaSalle here, coach, that had momentum in that second quarter to close it out. What stands out for you here from the, our halftime stats? Well, number one, of course, is the efficiency. 35% for USD here. Also, the points in the paint, they have been trying to attack inside, led by Koji Buenaflor and, of course, also Doi Dumo. But LaSalle staying here in the ball game via their activity on their aggressiveness. Seven, uh, plus seven on the free throw end here, of course, led by their star in Kiefer Alas. Well, Kiefer having a little bit of uh, help now in this game from Mako Dabao, who leads the DLSU in scoring. Coming into this one, did you predict that Mako Dabao would be leading DLSZ after the first half? Oh, definitely not. Mako Dabao came off the bench. They needed someone who will produce and he was the perfect guy off the bench here for the Lasalle Zobel. Really stepping up in that first half. 12 big points for Mako Dabao. And meanwhile, for USD, Waki Ludovice has continued on carrying the scoring outbursts that he had in the last game and putting it here, getting some help as well from, like you mentioned, Coach Doi Dumo and JB Lim. Oh, Waki Ludovice, of course, starting it off for USD on the offensive end, really providing a lot of the scoring. Uh, a lot of scoring for USD, but eventually it was that three-headed rotation on that backcourt in uh, Lim, Dumo, and also Ronquillo that got them a good edge to end the second quarter. Well, you see the lady scorers here for the Junior Archers. Wondaha in uh, that third spot with five points now for the Junior Archers. And how important now, Coach, is the contributions from Mako Dabao and uh, Bondaha going to be for the Junior Archers to try and 
crawl their way back up into the lead of this game. But you look at the defense of USD, their focus really is on Kiefer Alas. So the other guys really have to step up here for De La Salle Zobel. Dabao and Daha are two guys who are really needed by De La Salle Zobel. But one name I have not really felt in today's wall game is Waki Espina, one of the best scorers of De La Salle Zobel. But here, only four points to start the first half. But I'm sure he'll be getting a lot more touches and a lot more opportunities in the second half. So still some players on this DLS Z side that have yet to show up and yet to come up here for La Salle. So that must be very good to feel to only be down by six when some of your best guys still getting into the mix of things, still warming up, and maybe here in the second half, this just might be the time. You know, De La Salle Zobel has not been playing bad in today's ball game, but it's a matter of consistency. They'll be playing five good minutes of basketball and then five minutes of giving a lot of shots to USD. So it really is a matter just of consistency by the Dito Zobel for them to be able to eventually get the run and maybe get that lead back from USD. Well, for USD, if there was anything to nick on just a little bit, it's the free throws that they have had. Only one attempt coming from Milwaukee Ludovice. They are 100%, but that's a very small sample size uh, in terms of the free throws for USD. No, they are executing well. Not a lot of drives yet for USD. They are relying a lot on those open shots and also that, that outside game. They need to be more aggressive in making those drives for them to be able to get more free throws. Play continues here in the third quarter. Opening possession for USD. And Lasalle grabs the rebound. Foul called. Gonna go on the Tiger Cubs. Good way to start the quarter for the Lasalle Zubel here. USD will be going to that same play, just switching up on the options, either going to the shooter or maybe Bricks Versosa on that roll. But on that last possession, Zubel was able to switch up and close down on Bricks Versosa. So Zubel now with possession. Keeper Alas, pull up jumper, no good. Dumo gets the rebound here for USD. Dumo rejects the screen from Reyes, kicks it right back out to him, and that's going to be a travel called on Andre Dumo. So far, the adjustments of LaSalle, picking things hard para dito sa USD to start the third quarter. So, really good half-time half adjustment for Zubel. Uh, Jumper does not fall for Charles DiMaiano. USD with another board. No team able to get on the scoring here so far in the third quarter. Ronquillo drives, kicks it to the corner, and Lim steps on the line. That's going to be out of bounds. Their turnover for USD here in the third quarter. Not really the, the way USD has been playing quality basketball. So just a little bit of adjustment for Coach Manu. And I'm sure USD will be back on their feet. 39 to 33. Still is still our score as Lasalle can get the shot to go. Another rebound here. It goes to Versosa. JB Lim inside to Reyes. Reyes kicks it out. Ronquillo will reset with Dre Dumo now with it. Dumo. Working. Six seconds to shoot. Dumo drives, lays it in, will not go. Alas grabs the rebound. Makodaba with a pull up jumper. That's offline. Dimaano with a second try. Alas with a third try. And that shot is blocked by USD. Ronquillo loses it. Reyes comes up with it. And another block, another stop for DLSZ. Both known offensive teams, but here in the third quarter, defense is the name of the game. No baskets yet coming from either team. Espinas cannot break the drought. And it's still a six-point game. Ronquillo. And a dribbling violation called on Lance Ronquillo. The referees have been very strict on that dribbling violation. So, talagang very sharp ang eyes ng ating mga referee here in today's ball game. They also called that in the previous game. So, uh, real consistency from our referees here. 
Orofilio right in front of the referees on that one. Another turnover for USD, another possession for La Salle. And they'll have our maintained possession here with 14 on the shot clock. Alas has it, takes it to the corner. Mako Dabao trying to continue his hot streak here. Cannot get that shot to fall. Repossessed here by DLSZ. A shot missed by Alas. And JB Lim now has it for USD. Lim drives, barreling his way inside versus Sosa, trying to draw a foul. Keeper Alas who leads it. Alas with a Euro. Alas going all the way and scoring the first two points here in the third quarter. Calm, composed, and in control. What we thought was already an off-balance shot. Alas proved that, no, I got this, and gets that easy two there. Dumo misfires on the left-handed lay-in. Another possession and another chance for DLSC to trim down this lead. Oh, J.B. Lim getting the steal there for USD. Lim with a wide open lane to the basket and puts the lead right back up to six. And what instinct does J.B. Lim have? That is already seven steals para dito kay J.B. Lim. Just reading both the passing lanes and that dribbling lanes very well. Rocky Espina can get that one to fall. Versosa saves it into the hands of J.B. Lim, but it's stolen by Mako Dabao, but couldn't handle the rock. Could have been an easy two for Mako Dabao, but let's read that. Once again, reading the passing lane terrifically. JP Lim goes for the fast break here. Already seven steals para I JB Lim here in today's ballgame. Well, Lim having more steals than points now, coach, in this game. Shot on the inside, missed by USD. Dimaano secures the rebound. 41 to 35. Both teams only with one bucket here. Mako Dabao in and out three. Second opportunity for Bondaha is good. That is already 12 offensive rebounds for De La Salle here in today's ballgame. Those second chance points have been crucial para dito sa Zubel to keep them alive here in this game. Well, seven rebounds. Meanwhile, in total for Bondaha, three. Andre Dumo misfires on that one. And smart play there by Mako Dabao, who bounces it off of the USD defender. Watch this again. Off the miss. Look at that team effort by the La Salle Zobel. Maybe undersized, but if you have three white shirts, then chances are that ball will go your way. Another second chance point para dito sa Zobel. Just a reminder, Coach, this is a team, a uh, De La Salle team who might be lacking in height compared to USD, but still very lengthy players and very skillful players like Keeper Alas, who drills a three-pointer that time. You know, we might be only looking at height, but if you're looking at the wingspan, the, 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 the length of the legs of these players, but you know, ang pinaka important, it's the heart of these players and getting that rebound. That's why they are really battling it out down low. ELSU-Z, a chance here to retake the lead. Alas, Tudaha, he tries for three. That's no good. Battle for the rebound. ELSZ comes up with it. Alas gives it up, three-pointer on the way, no good. And Ludovice has the ball for USD. Corner triple is good for Buxit. A victory for Buxit. That is his role here to stretch out the floor for USD and provide some physicality on the defensive end every time. On the offensive sets, he will be going to his spots. Cannot give him that space. Good three to start for Charles Buxit. And Buxit drills his first triple of the game here. And first basket for him as well. The LSU doing a good job at cutting the lead down to one. And but USD responding well to keep it to within four. Espina. 
misses that one offensive rebound. It stays with DLSZ. What heart these players are putting in and getting those boards. Look at this. Three yellow shirts, yet at the end, you'll still land with the hands of Atienza. Kenya, Kenya Chenza securing that one and securing the possession here for DLSZ. Another chance for them to trim the lead. They missed fire on that one. Velasquez. Gives it to Buena Flor. Buena Flor now to Ludovice. Waki gives it up. Manding has trouble in the lane that time. It'll stay with UST with 6.1 on the shot clock. I just realized that these are actually teammates in our Philippine team in Velasquez, Ludovice, and also Kiefer Alas. So. They really know each other on how the and how they play on the strengths and the weaknesses because they, they already have trained with each other. And all of them playing very, very well here in the UAP as well as jo Charles Brooks sit, floats it up for the long two to go. Good, good step up here for Charles Brooks it, doing it on the offensive and defensive end here. Getting a steal that time for USD as they now have a six-point lead here. Let's watch here the drive by Charles Boxit. Good help side, but goes for that lob. And that finish, Charles Boxit, one of the mainstays from the final four run in the last year. So we'll be playing a huge leadership role here for the Tiger Cubs. And that is UST. Another possession here and a chance to extend this lead. Manding drives, challenge at the rim, puts it in, plus the foul, and and one opportunity coming Carl Manding's way. You know, what I love about Carl Manding is that he takes it strong every time. He has this mentality that he doesn't mind on whoever is in front of him. He will attack. And you gotta give credit to the guy because a lot of times either he gets fouls or he actually makes these kinds of shots. And to your point, coach, a whole lot of contact on that play, but managed to squeeze it in. Misses the free throw, but it still gives USD an eight point lead. DLSZ retains possession. Alasal is just having struggles here to break away and fight back into this lead. Ball trickles out of bounds. It'll stay now with DLSZ and they'll have 10 seconds on the shot clock. I want to know what thrills Coach Manu Inigo has for these players to read these passing lanes so well every possession. Well, nine total assists for them. It's led to a lot of quality possessions. And for DLSU, that time it misses. Still an eight point lead for USD. Buena Flor drives. Buena Flor with a spin. Can't get that one to fall, but it ball finds its way to Buxit. Halas is down, but gets back up. Buxit barreling his way on the inside and gets it in for two. Using all that muscle on that play. What a strong drive by Buxit. Mako Dabao with a fake. Mako Dabao gets fouled on his way to the basket and he'll shoot some free throws. That was a beautiful hesitation coming from Mako Daba, but let's go first to this move by Charles Boxit muscling his way through Joaquin Espina. Beautiful third quarter for Boxit here. Well, Boxit being scoreless in the first half already has seven in this one. Well, uh, I guess all it took was that one three-pointer for Charles Boxit to get some momentum going on his side. Charles Boxit, the third quarter has been named to him. He is one of the leaders why UST has extended this lead to double digits here in the third. Makodabao cuts the lead 
back down to single digits. After that free throw, it's a nine point game for USD and DLSZ. Reach the final two minutes of play here in the third quarter. USD has possession. Loreto handoff to Ludovice. Ludovice out to Buena Flor, and Buena Flor cuts to the basket for two. Perfect execution there. He did not even see the rolling Buena Flor, yet Naniwala siya, and he believed in the system that he was going to roll. Perfect find going to Buena Flor. Ludovice with his second assist in the game here for USD. Velasquez drives, Velasquez going all the way to the basket and flips it up and in. That will be a strength of Velasquez. He has always been known as a slasher. But let's look at this first. Ludovice through three, just believing that when the floor will be there. And on the next play, the slasher in Kurt Velasquez showing his skill there. Now USD with a 13-point lead heading into the timeout. See the UPIS Junior Fighting Maroons sitting courtside. Came off a uh, very, very close uh, defeat there at the hands of the defending champs. You know, these kids might be staying all the way up to the 6 p.m. game already. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did because there's still a whole lot of UAP basketball action to be played here, coach. And Mako Davao continues that action with a three here for DLSC. Career high game for Mako Davao, 15 points, and we are only on the third quarter here. Davao has had a very nice game for LaSalle. And one of the best games of his young career. A shot missed that time for USD. Leads to a break here. Bit of a miscom for the junior archers. Good pass pick coming from Mahu Davao. And leaving him wide open on that wing. That's the lead to 10 here. Mako Davao now with three triples in this game. And another triple coming at the hands of Kiefer Alas. And that is the start of that idea of Kiefer Alas. He's missed a lot here in today's ball game. Yet, given that open opportunity, he still has the confidence to take it. And you need that from your star eventually to heat up here in the game. He has tied Dabao for the leading scorer for DLSU, both with 16 now. Books it, fade away J, no good. Shot clock turned off for DLSZ. Dabao from downtown. That's offline. Still some time here if you're USD. Buxit, step back three for him, will not fall. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. And similar to how we end, ended the second quarter, LaSalle carrying some momentum, heading into the final 10 minutes of play, coach. Going on that run and cutting this lead down now to only seven. Strong start by USD here in the third, going up by as much as 13 points, led by one of those guys, JP Lim, forcing that steal and that fast break. But to end the quarter, LaSalle has always had an answer, led by that guy as well, their star and their leader, Keeper Alas. Keeper with 16 points in the game. He had that with seven rebounds, two assists, and three steals for him as he is trying to lead DLSZ to their third victory of the season. We'll head into the fourth quarter after this break. Final quarter of play here for our boys basketball matchup between the De La Salle Zabel Junior Archers and the USD Tiger Cubs. USD still up in front with a comfortable gap here between themselves and La Salle. But it was the fight back by the Junior Archers that they'll have as momentum here in the fourth quarter. 
Final 10 minutes here, coach. As you see the quarter scoring, what does that tell you about the story of this game? Well, you know, UST has not led a lot by each quarter, but they have been winning each quarter by a small margin, giving them a comfortable lead of seven here. So LaSalle needs an answer on the defensive end to make stop for them to make a comeback. Well, LaSalle has seen some valuable production, as they have been from Kiefer Alas, but also from Mako Dabao, who missed the shot earlier. But, uh, but a lot of momentum now for this junior archer's team. Manding taking it all the way. Strong move to the basket. And he'll be awarded with some free throws. You gotta commend Manding and Charles Boxet. Two guys who really work on their upper body strength so that they can attack any defense here. And that's why they are given a lot more minutes by Coach Manu Inigo here in the second half. Manding now at the free throw line for USD. Only shooting their third and fourth free throws of the day, Coach. And that was something that we said might be a hindrance for USD heading into the second half. But so far, not, not a problem at all. Uh, they have not been that aggressive. They have not been getting a lot of free throws in today's ball game. But one thing they are doing well is scoring inside. Plus 16 in the points in the paint and also plus four in that fast break points, giving them that nine point, at le nine point uh, lead here. Well, 56 to 47 is our score. Lasalle still trying to fight back. USD trying to stay in front. Ball in the hands of Kiefer Alas, who pulls up for the mid-range jumper, and that one falls. Kiefer now getting hot in the right time here in the second half. USD has to be careful. This guy can really put his whole team on his back. And there is still enough time for Kiefer to mount a big comeback. 18 points in the game for Kiefer Alas as Manding puts it up, banks it home, and gets an and one opportunity. Third quarter was Charles Wuxit. Now fourth quarter is now Carl Mandin time. It's the CNC connection here that is giving USD this edge, really keeping them in the lead here. Boy, Coach, you're throwing these trademarks away for free, aren't you? It's You're throwing this all for free. It's going to be for us to use. <laughs> Uh, if someone else is going to use this, they need to cut the check. 59-49 <laughs> is our score here. A double-digit lead for USD. Their biggest lead of the day was 13. USD, or Lasalle rather, will have possession. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Makodabo. And a kick ball call. That's gonna go now. And that's gonna stay rather with DLSZ. USC never changes their defense this whole ball game. That zone is really something they're gonna trust moving forward in the season. And it's gonna be their specialty here in season 86. JB Lim going all the way and laying it in for the deuce. Once again, we'll be adding to his highlights. And then the Nirman lay up to JB Lim there. JV Lim now with 10 points in the game to go along with seven steals. Jump shot is no good that time. Versosa secures the rebound here for USD. Now things are going the side of the Tiger Cup. They are making crucial stops here. Slowly extending the lead here in this ball game. Manding with it and Manding gets called for the travel. Well, you talked about the conditioning of these players, Coach. Carl Manding here, very efficient, 43% from the field. And USD doing a great job at only limiting their turnovers to 15 here. Imano looking for his teammates. Davao gets it to Alas. 10 seconds to shoot here for LaSalle. Alas with a pull-up jumper. And that one falls. 
Las has been the spark plug here for LaSalle in the fourth quarter. The only guy stepping up in terms of scoring. All the other guys really closed out by UST. Very, very active zone played by UST. Every time that ball is rotating, that defense is also moving. That's why it's so hard for LaSalle Zubel to be able to get easy buckets. But if you have a talent like Kiefer Alas, then there is still a threat on the court. Well, Kiefer will have another opportunity at an extra point here after that jumper. A foul was called. And now a chance to cut it to within single digits. Misses that by the U DLSU. DLSZ rather regains possession. Alas thought about it. Alas with another jumper and that has been the bread and butter for Kiefer Alas the past couple of possessions. Just like that, 22 points already for Kiefer Alas. Back-to-back mid-range buckets. That's when you thought UST was trying to get a big lead and be comfortable. Just Kiefer Alas putting his whole team on his back. Dre Dumo, meanwhile, answers with a three for UST. The LSZ having troubles here securing the ball, but a foul is called. And that's going to be more free throws on the way now for LaSalle. Let's see here first. Keeper Alas, one step going inside. Little space, yet all talent for Keeper. But on the other side, so much options on that play, really. You can have Dumo on the outside, you have a cutter, and you can also go with a Bricks Versosa on that roll. It's been the bread and butter play of UST. So much options, and they find the right guy each and every time. A UST coach shooting 6 for 18 from downtown, 33%, as opposed to the 17% by DLSZ. Really has been a good threat for UST here. More efficient, showing why they are in the lead here. 64 to 50, 54. It's Rogelio now to Versosa. Versosa fires for three. Will not get that one to drop, but the length of USD secures another possession. When a floor going all the way, rebound to Alas. Keeper drives, bounce pass on the inside to Dimaano. As he gets it in, plus the foul. I just love how Dimaano moves inside. Has great footwork. Knows where to spot. And just has great athleticism. And he's been crucial for LaSalle Zubel to keep this lead very manageable. Look at the numbers of Charles Dimaano. 14 rebounds, 5 offensive rebounds alongside seven points for Charles. I'm oh, sorry, six points for Charles. But the main guy is for the South of Bell. Well, Dimano leading everyone here in the game with those 14 rebounds. Some valuable possessions for DLSZ as they try to trim this lead. It looks like there's a violation, so there will be another free throw opportunity for Charles here. Mano making the most out of his trip to the line. Cuts this lead down to seven. A lot of time here for LaSalle to mount a comeback. Buena Flor gets it to Dumo. Now to Don Quilio. Eight seconds to shoot here. Dumo step back, gets it to Don Quilio. He fires from downtown. That's too short. And Dimaano with another rebound. Keeper Alas has that shot, or that ball stolen by Dumo. Dumo inside to Lim, inside to Buena Flor. Nice passing there by the Tiger Cubs. Great team basketball team played there. Three guys running the break. Three guys getting a touch of that basketball, eventually getting the best shot available on that fast break. Lead back up to nine. Alas cannot get that shot to fall. Andre Dumo now with the rebound. Once again, that zone making things very hard for De La Salle-Jubel. When a floor gets it here to Ronquillo. USD running the play. JB Lim for three and puts it in. 
inside outside game for JB Lim. He has shown his full package in today's ball game. JB Lim has his first three here. And USD firing still in all cylinders now with a 12 point lead. Up ahead pass to Dungo. Dungo fakes and he is blocked, but that is going to be a foul on Mako Dabao. USD just play amazing basketball here. Dungo to Lim to Buena Flor. Perfect spots, perfect execution, and on the next play, Lim also shows that he has that three-point shot, extending the lead all the way to 12 here. USD has just found that touch coach from downtown with seven here in the game. Well, they're playing amazing team basketball. Everybody is a threat on their offensive end. The highest scorer only with 11 points here in today's game. JB Lim with 10, Medubisi with 10, Buena Flor with 10, Mandik even with 9. So just everybody chipping in here for USD. Well, they have an extremely comfortable cushion now. Their biggest lead of the game at 14. As we take a break here, LaSalle gets a timeout. We're back in the ball game. Across the halfway point here in the fourth quarter. Ramasal down by 14 here against USD. And coach, again, talking about USD here. This is a team that has just hit a lot of the shots that they've taken here and have made some quality stops as well on the defensive end to go up here by 14. You know, this fourth quarter, the USD has really been doing it very well on their offensive end, very executing very well. Moving. Everybody is an option and not the defense really playing active on the passing lanes, getting turnovers. But Keeper Alas just very hard to, to read here in the fourth quarter, putting Lasal on, on his back. Well, Keeper really trying to keep the fire alive here for DLSC. 25 points and 8 rebounds now in the game. When a floor, a foul called. On LaSalle. They're watching this USC team. They still need a little bit more experience. Probably probably a lot more uh, repetitions on the games. But their physicality is college ready. They play very physical, knows how to control their body. So I'm sure with a lot more experience, these guys are really bound for a bright future. And this is a team that, well, they train in the same gym as uh, the seniors team. So I'm sure there are some times where they're <laughs> in uh -oh. practice and they go one on one or five on five sets with uh, the seniors. But I agree, Coach. This is a team that looks well ready, uh, at least a good bunch of their players ready for that next level of basketball. And this is why we have high school basketball to prepare these guys for the bright future ahead. Not just for the UAP seniors, but of course for Philippine basketball. Well, both teams will try to prepare for the final 357 this mark in this mark as USC takes a timeout. Back in the ball game, where the USC Tiger Cubs have an 11 point lead here against the DLSC Junior Archers. Keeper Alas trying to keep things going here for his squad, but time is ticking rapidly for LaSalle here, Coach. LaSalle really has to be able to find a way here in getting some baskets, cutting the lead every possession down, and more importantly, on the defensive end, make stops against the USC team, and that is perfectly how to start it, forcing a five-second violation against USD. Well, the, that's only the 16th turnover of the game here for USD. Asal also doing a great job of keeping that ball on their court. 17 in the game for them. Alas, open for three. Too short that time. And another foul called on the rebound. It's going to go on Charles Dimaano. 
slower pace, not really going the side of La Salle here. Very hard to attack that zone defense of UST because of the length of these players. And you really have to be able to find a way in breaking that zone, maybe make a few threes. And one guy that really has been struggling is Waki Espina, one of their main guys in terms of scoring. But today, not really the best of games coming from Waki. Crucial now, Coach, for LaSalle. They're over the foul limit. So that's going to mean free throws the rest of the way for the final 340 for UST. But when Flor couldn't capitalize on that trip to the free throw line, and still an 11 point game here for UST. Espina fires from downtown. Espina gets that shot short. Andre Dumo kicks it up ahead to Buena Flor, and Buena Flor lays it in easily for the deuce. Dabao firing for three. Offline that time. Ball finds its way now to Lance Ronquillo. It's a struggle for De La Salzobel from that three point line. Only 17% in today's ball game. Very hard to break that zone if you can't make the outside shots. JB Lim misfires for, from three. Before Alas secures the rebound. Oh, but Lim gets another steal here for USD, and that's his eighth. JB Lim, what a ball game defensively for him. Eight steals, a breakout game in terms of steals for JB Lim, and that just might put him on one of the best uh, in, in the Steel's column here this season. Oh, meanwhile, Manting, another strong drive to the basket. Gets him up to double-digit scoring as well for USD. Underrated game as well for Carl Manting. 11 points and 8 rebounds. And Doi Dungo, textbook pick and roll. Perfect finish for Carl Manting. Uh, USD just showing the full arsenal here of skills that they have on the floor. Now have five players in double digits. Keeper Alas doing a lot of everything now for DLSZ. The fourth quarter has been all Keeper Alas for De La Salzobel. You see him a little tired here because he is trying to push De La Salzobel to be, to be closer here in the ball game, but it's just a real struggle here in the fourth. Well, Alas has found it hard to see some contributions here from other guys except himself. Gets another shot there. Alas playing 32 minutes in this game. Mako Dabao gets a steal here for DLSZ. Dabao to Alas, right back to Dabao. Mako drives, puts it up, no. And USD secures the rebound. Well, the Tiger Cubs in a firm position here to take win number three of the season as we approach the final minute of play here in the game. It's going to be a big game here for USD. This win will uh, put them closer into that final four contention. They'll be tied at number two right now at three and one. That's going to be very big for USD as they want to make another final four run with a whole new lineup, a new head coach. But of course, guys like Charles Moxit are still here from that final four run in that last year. So he, he's part of that lineup and trying to put in that leadership and that experience for them to make a good run here in the season. Well, there was a lot of expectations, obviously, for this USD team. So like you mentioned, Coach, new coaching, a whole bunch of new players on this squad as well. As you see, Father Rodel Sancho in attendance here for USD. Seeing, uh, awaiting as well the game number three of the USD Growling Tigresses. Two USD games in one day. Why not support, right? Already one in a, one for two uh, for Father Rodel Sancho as USD is seconds away here from getting win number three 
in the season. And the shot clock will wind down and that will do it here. The USC Tiger Cubs will take win number three in season 86 as they take the victory against La Salle, 75 to 62. The USC just winning all of the quarters here, doing everything right. Starting every quarter strong for them to be able to get the rhythm. Uh, La Salle tried to knock on the door, trying to make runs. I try to make runs. The two guys who really stepped up for La Salle here, of course, Mako Dabao and Charles Dimahan, and of course, Kiefer Alas will always be there for Zabel. But at the end of the day, the depth, the leg, and also that defense and energy of the Tiger Cubs are too much for Zabel here. They'll be going home with a 13 point win here in today's ballgame. Well, five players in double digits for USD, but there's only one player who we can award the best player of the game to, and that goes to JB Lim, who made all the stops, literally and figuratively.